Hi everyone. This is my first red bit. Um, so t Ryan, this one's for you. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about something that we all know and love, something I actually feel like I know enough to talk about, um, and that's timesheets in Mavenlink and why they matter and how we're going to do them better. So first, we'll discuss um, basically timesheets in general, how they're essential organizational tools for all agencies. Second, we'll go over why we use Mavenlink specifically and a review of what timesheets should look like for you the role they play in our day to day and how they are crucial to our success, ensuring accurate utilization and in turn, bringing us more money. And lastly, we'll talk about a few ways we can all work to more efficiently and effectively do our timesheets to improve our process at Red Pepper and make this quicker and easier for everyone. Just kidding. Um, I am not actually talking about that. Um, <laughs> um, I might suck. I don't suck that much to talk about that for 10 minutes. Um, it's not very inspiring, although we should probably talk about that at some point. Um, happy April Fools! I hope at least like a couple of you were like, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> and I hope, I hope some of you were like, um, it's April 1st, gotta do my timesheets from March 1st. So either way, now you're thinking about it, my job is done. Anyway, um, now that I've effectively wasted a minute or two, um, this is now my second red bit. Um, and this is the real one. So over the last couple of months, I've spent so much time thinking about what I wanted to bring here, and it always kind of scared me a lot. Um, I didn't think I was passionate or knowledgeable enough about something to bring it here and teach you guys about it. Um, nothing was really sticking when I was thinking about topics, and then I became really negative and stressed out about it, and then I was like, this is bad. This is something that should be so fun and exciting and an opportunity for growth and to teach people. Um, and that thought process kind of taught me that I should talk about something that I actively work on every day. I'm still always working on, but it's super important to me. And something I think everybody could benefit from just a little bit in putting intentional tor time towards, and that's thinking positively. So some of you might think optimism is bogus. Or maybe you're saying thinking positive things, okay, seems simple enough. But as many of us probably know, it's easier said than done, and there's much more to it than thinking just a couple positive things every now and again. So today we're going to talk a little bit about, I should probably use this, um, why as humans we tend to lean negative and why it's harmful for us, the benefits we can gain from developing a positive attitude, and how we can work to intentionally develop our positivity. So let's get to it. Um, think about how positive most little kids always are, or how carefree, hopeful, and purely positive you were as a child. When you're five years old, you can scribble something on a piece of paper, and you're so proud of it, you want to put it on the fridge, you want everyone to see it, and it's so bad, it's like just a line. Um, but you're so proud of it, and that's the thing, and you're excited and prideful and full of wonder and excitement about what's coming next, and you're not afraid to fail, most importantly. But as we get older and experience more, we lose so much of this. We develop fears, doubts, insecurities, the list could go on, and all of these things seem to clutter our mind more than anything. Sounds pretty lame, but why does this happen? As Katie's read bit a few weeks ago mentioned, overthinking is such a common struggle for so many of us daily. It's because our brains are literally incapable of not thinking. Studies show that we have 12,000 to 60,000 thoughts per day, which is a lot, but nearly 80% of those are negative, which is really sad when you think about it. Um, but quite honestly, it makes sense. Um, when you think about it, we need to notice what is wrong in order to fix things and improve. Um, we're wired to look for what's not right, and we sort of tune out what is going right. Your brain is always on guard and erring on the side of caution. It's no wonder Anxiety is the most common mental diagnosis in the U.S., with um, depression not far behind. You have to literally work harder to be happier. Letting those negative tendencies take over can have lasting harmful effects. Habitual negative thinking drains us mentally, physically, emotionally. It feeds anger. It stifles us creatively, socially, lowers our motivation, quality of work, all kinds of bad things. And it impacts the people around us, too. And the universe doesn't really help, either. Over 90% of headlines you see on the news are negative, 
social media and the visibility into everyone's lives opens up a whole or other world of self-esteem issues for young people. We're constantly comparing ourselves to others. Things that are problematic make for more exciting conversation, quite frankly. Um, complaining is contagious. Our view of the world has a fundamental tendency to be negative. And you can develop negative habits that you don't even realize you're developing. I realize this all sounds incredibly negative. Um, but the good news is, just like any other skill, your brain can actually develop to become more positive and balance out these tendencies and biases. And the benefits we can gain from reframing to a more positive mindset are pretty incredible. So now we can talk about positivity and why it's not lame. A few months ago, I watched a TED Talk called The Happy Secret to Better Work by Sean Acker. Since I watched that, I've thought a lot about how I frame my thoughts about the way I respond to stress and um, all in an effort to create more positive thinking habits and see if it makes a difference. Um, especially, he, he talked a lot about how it's not necessarily our reality that shapes us, but the lens through which our brain sees the reality, or sees the world that shapes our reality. AKA, if you change the lens, you can change your happiness. Um, that resonated a lot with me and sort of inspired me to kind of start looking into this. Um, he also discovered, or not discovered, <laughs> discussed, um, the power of positivity in the workplace and how only 25% of job successes are predicted by your IQ, whereas 75% of job successes are actually predicted by things like optimism, social support and acknowledgement, as well as your ability to see stress as a challenge instead of as a threat. Putting intentional effort towards thinking positively can transform our day to day in ways such as improved health and general well-being. Studies show that people who are optimis optimistic actually have longer lifespans, have stronger immune systems, and are less at risk for cardiovascular disease. It can also help us better cope with stress. It helps us reframe frame problems and also see the bigger picture. It can help us, it can help us strengthen our relationships increase our energy levels, boost confidence, productivity, and creativity. And studies show that your brain at um, positive is actually 31% more productive than it is at neutral, stressed, or negative. Um, and lastly, obviously, positivity can just lead to greater overall happiness for you and everyone else you interact with. So why not do it, really? Um, so we've talked about negativity and why it's so prevalent and how harmful it can be for us overall. We've also talked about the power of positivity and all the ways shifting our brain um, towards more positive ways of thinking can help us. That's really cool. But how can we go about actively embracing that positivity and incorporating it into our everyday lives? We'll get to that, but first, disclaimer. This does not mean that you're never allowed to think negatively. You're nev it doesn't mean you're never going to. It doesn't mean you're not allowed to struggle or recognize the challenges that we're all inevitably going to face because they're valid and they happen, and some things are just flat out crappy. Um, doesn't mean all days are gonna be great because you thought about puppies and Zuzu when you were frustrated. Um, but it just means we can work to reframe how we see things, how we approach them, how we react to them so that the negativity becomes minimized and the positive thinking becomes more of our natural reaction. Thank you, we can now proceed. So what are some ways we can go about um, embracing the positive? First, it all starts with believing that positivity is a choice and taking the responsibility of making that choice a reality for us. It has to come from within. Second, regularly practicing gratitude. I'm going to journal three things um, that went well each day for my 100 day challenge starting tomorrow and try and put some emphasis on things I'm grateful for, the little things, things that just happen each and every day that I can say, that went well today, um, this couldn't be a, a bad day overall. Um, so if you need some inspiration for your 100 day challenge that starts tomorrow, go ahead and get some inspiration from this. Um, celebrating tiny victories, showing appreciation and support of celebrating even a small goal is fun, First of all, it keeps yourself and others motivated and looking forward to what's coming next. Um, recognizing negative thoughts and replacing them with positive ones. Realizing when you're thinking ne negatively is the first step, and then it's ne the next step is consciously replacing that with positive ones. Eventually, you'll notice the negative ones don't happen as naturally. 
Next, take intentional time for things that make you happy, relieve you of stress, etc. Make them a part of your normal routine, like exercising, meditation, listening to music, dancing around your bedroom, whatever your outlet may be, don't forego them for other things just because you're busy. Control what you can control and do just that. This is a big one for me. I know it's something everybody struggles with. You're worrying about all these outside things. You can't do anything about it, but it's still like killing you. Um, it's something we all struggle with, but it truly, truly helps and makes you prioritize and realize what's actually worth your time and effort worrying about. Find the humor. You all know I love this one. Um, be willing to laugh at yourself. Make other people laugh. It can't ever hurt the situation. I mean, I guess it could, but if you're laughing at someone, I don't know. Um, and lastly, speak positivity. Speak it into existence so that it becomes habit. Both out loud and in your head is just as important. Encourage yourself and others constantly. Your words matter and use them for good. I just wanted to end with a quote that I felt summed up pretty well how powerful positivity really can be. Um, it's kind of like a tongue twister, but I'm gonna go for it. Um, keep your thoughts positive because your thoughts become your words. Keep your words positive because your words become your behavior. Keep your behavior positive because your behavior becomes your habits. Keep your habits positive because your habits become your values. Keep your values positive because your values become your destiny. Sure, it may come more naturally to some, but with just a little bit of effort and directed attention, thinking positively can be possible for all of us. Thank you.